Hello everyone. Today we are talking about base64 encoding. First, we need to establish the difference between encryption and encoding. Encryption means that we take a clear text input and transform it to a ciphertext using a key. The only way to decrypt the ciphertext uh, to its original clear text is by using the decryption key, which could be the same key as has been used during encryption, but not necessarily so. Coding, on the other hand, works without a key, meaning I don't need a key to encode a clear text nor to decode the ciphertext. This means that everyone who receives the ciphertext can decode it and it is not meant to be a safeguard against eavesdroppers. In today's video, we are covering base64 encoding, which is used to transform 8-bit binary data into ASCII or ASCII text. This includes pictures, videos or even ciphertext. Those can be transformed to quote-unquote normal text blocks to be used by protocols who can only process plain text. Such protocols include the email protocols SMTP, SMIME and even PGP. Let's look at an example to see how it works. These are three bytes of the same character, the less than sign. In order to encode it to base64, we need to split them up into 6-bit intervals. This is also where the name base64 comes from, since 2 to the power of 6 equals 64. The table you can see here shows the mapping of the bit and decimal values to ASCII characters. The decimal values of the four 6-bit words are 15, 3, 48 and 60. Using the mapping as defined by the protocol, we get the ASCII characters P, D, W and 8. The base64 coding of this bit string is therefore PDW8. Now, 3 times 8 is 24, which is neatly divisible by 6. Therefore, we didn't have any problems regarding the amount of bits. But what if we have only 2 bytes, such as in this example? Splitting them up into 6-bit intervals shows that there are 2 bits missing to have 3 full 6-bit words. Here, a method called padding comes into play. Padding means to fill up the empty bits with zero bits until the desired length is reached and it is applied in various protocols, not only base64. Let's look at how it works in practice. If we have only one byte to encode, this amounts to 8 bits. After transforming these 8 bits to 6-bit words, the second word is missing 4 bits to become a 6-bit word. That means that I have to add an additional 2 bytes to the original byte in order to get to a number which is divisible by 6, since 8 times 3 equals 6 times 4, as we have seen previously. If we have 2 bytes, we only need 1 byte to get to our target 3 bytes, and if we have 3 bytes, we don't need to perform any padding. Obviously, the same holds true for values above 3, since we only have to reach a byte number which is divisible by 3, such as 3, 6, 9, and so on. To tell the decoder that we use padding, the zero bytes at the end are not encoded directly, but rather as equal signs. One equal sign for one byte padding, and two signs for two bytes. So going back to our example, we know that we need to add one padding byte to the original two bytes. Transferring them to 6-bit words shows that the last word is all zeros, which we said previously doesn't convert to the decimal value of zero, but rather gets marked as padding byte. Therefore, the mapping converts the padding byte to an equal sign. Let's look at one more example to see the difference. If we have only one byte, we need two padding bytes. After converting it to 6-bit words, we can see that there are only zeros from the second 6-bit word on. But the first zero 6-bit word doesn't come exclusively from the padding byte, so this is transformed to an A. Whereas the other two are coming from the padding bytes, so they are transformed to padding bytes 1 and 2, telling the encoder to map them to equal signs. Before concluding, I want to briefly address the main issue with base64, and that is the size increase it causes. If we look at the original message, which was, which was just three less than signs, they were finally encoded as four characters. This is just an example, but it is clear that base64 causes the payload to increase by four thirds the original size, simply because I have a smaller uh, alphabet and I need more characters to express the same initial payload if I want to avoid any losses. That's why emails you send with attachments are larger than the actual contents. 
that concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. Tell me in the comments which topics you would like me to cover. Like and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.